It's hard to turn the page, though, that quickly after the incredible night it was Saturday night as San Diego State took care of business and beat the Stanford Cardinal. And a big part of that victory was an amazing defensive effort by the Aztecs holding Stanford to just eight first downs, under 100 (laughs) yards passing. Had it not been for a couple of long runs, Stanford did just about nothing against that Aztec defense. And the architect, the man that helps it put it all together, get those players ready to go, is defensive coordinator Danny Gonzalez joining us here today. Coach, uh, congratulations uh, on the big victory against Stanford. I mean, my thought going into this game was, if the Aztecs are going to win, it's going to be a shootout game. I just felt like Stanford, they're a very physical team, great success against schools. But you found a way to slow them down. Were you surprised at how effective the defense was against that Stanford team? You know, thanks guys for having me on. Uh, you know what, surprise? I don't know that I would say surprise. I mean, we, we have high expectations with our guys. Our guys hold themselves to high, have high expectations for themselves. So we weren't surprised. We knew it was going to be a really physical game. And what we had talked to him about all week long was don't give up big plays. Well, that part of the game plan must not have sunk in because on three runs, they had 151 yards. Now, on the other 10, 10 runs for Bryce Bubb, he had 23 yards. So um, we, were, we were able to do some things, but the big runs were what killed us on the night. Coach, it's your first year as a defensive coordinator, but you've been around the program for a very, very long time. And I'm not saying that the Aztecs as a whole are overconfident or cocky, they are just confident. You can tell that these kids know what they're doing when they get out onto the field. Do you see that, especially in your defense, now three games into the season? I, I would agree with you as, as far as I think we have a bunch of super confident kids. there, And there's a, there's a really fine line between being confident, cocky, or arrogant, however you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And, and our kids have done a really good job of Holding the line of, of playing on the edge, being really, really aggressive, and believing in themselves. And I, you've got you've got the rotation of 15, 16 guys, and they really, truly do play for each other and believe in themselves. Well, it was a team effort, but one guy got singled out. Football Writers of Association of America today announcing that Cameron Kelly is the National Defensive Player of the Week. How come he's never had any sacks before, Coach? He had two sacks in this game. <laughs> First time for the senior to get sacks in the game. I mean, what can you say about Cameron's performance on Saturday? I thought Cam did a great job on Saturday, and I was I was giving him a hard time after the game. Your your point exactly. You know, I coached Cam for three years. He'd have any sacks. Now Coach White coached him, and he's got two in one game. So <laughs> he must be teaching it better than me. But, uh, you know, it was really a really neat deal for, for Cam to play as well as he did. Uh, to have that opportunity to make the interception he did at the end of the game. Uh, the thing that we've been really, really pleased with Cam is um, the transition from safety to corner. I mean, we put our corners on a big-time island. We tell those guys, okay, you, you take that guy and you make sure he don't catch the ball, and we're going to use the other nine guys to, to stop the run and make sure that they have to throw it. And to his credit, to be put out there on an island after something he hadn't done the last three years, and now he's getting some, some recognition for it, just really, really proud of Cam. Aztecs defensive coordinator Danny Gonzalez with us here on Extra 1360 Fox Sports San Diego. Coach, it's on to Air Force. Mm. Everybody knows what Air Force, the problem they present, especially if you're somebody who's defensively planning for them. What is, if you can, maybe give us the nickel version. What's the most important thing when you play defense against the Falcons? Well, you, the, when, you, when you're going against a triple option, you've got to stop the fullback. You can't let the fullback get started. If the fullback's working, everything's working. Because once the fullback starts working, now you have guys get undisciplined and they start trying to make plays that don't belong to them. So first and foremost, we have to stop the fullback. Uh, Air Force has got a bunch of really, really tough-minded, aggressive playing guys. That their, their mantra is very similar to ours. They want to be the most physical team out there. And the style of offense that they run – gives them that opportunity to play that way. I mean, it's like our guys. It's going to be smash mouth, downhill. Uh, they want to run the ball. I mean, they threw nine passes against Michigan on Saturday. And they were one for nine. The one was a 64-yard touchdown pass. So they, they don't do it a lot, but when they do it, it can be effective. So we have to make sure in the secondary we're disciplined with our eyes and get everybody to run to the football, game tackle, and just play really, really aggressive. I watched that game, Coach, uh, and they were in that game all the way into the fourth quarter against Michigan in the big house. 
How do you simulate that? I mean, it's so, I mean, it, it would seem to be next to impossible to try to simulate that triple option offense when your regular offense, you know, you know, your practice at the end doesn't really know how to run it, obviously, the same way Air Force can. How do you prepare your players for something that's so hard to simulate in practice? You know, we we uh, we give them we give them the scout. The scout team has done a great job over over the years of trying to give us the best look you can. Uh, that's the the biggest thing. The first series, and you'll see it on Saturday for for those that are watching it at home or or if you make it to the game. The first series, the speed is just so different than what they've seen all week. And you'll see a bunch of guys getting cut to the ground because they're not used to those guys flying down. Now we don't cut our guys in practice and we try and keep them healthy. So those guys are going to be coming downfield. They're going to be throwing at our knees. Uh, after about the first five or six plays and our guys get a feel for it and actually see, then they can get into it and start playing. But the, the first the first series is always a really scary deal from the sideline for a coach because you, you can tell them all week how fast those guys are going to be. You can tell them how weak what it's, what it's going to look like, and then they get out there and it's a 1,000 miles faster than what we presented it to them. So uh, just get them to – you've got to try and get them to be disciplined, play hard, and survive those first five plays and then – how it goes the rest of the night coach all my years doing sideline reporting when we do games in colorado springs I like i'd get out of my bed in the hotel room and i'd be sucking gas for like 15 minutes okay because i'm <laughs> totally out of shape but as far as I, I think people a lot of times want to point to the altitude and say oh my god look how high you are but did they lose sight of the fact of what great shape these guys are in going into the game you know it's a combination of these guys are in great shape i mean we have them here all summer long they're running. They're in tremendous cardiovascular shape. And then in today's game, I mean, the the we're on CBS Sports this week, so I think the first quarter has five TV timeouts, mm-hmm. four TV timeouts in the second quarter. So there's so many stops during the game. The altitude is not not a factor at all. I mean, we'll be completely fine. You know, to be honest with you, I don't even. It's never talked about around here, and I bet you most of our kids don't even know it's it's a mile high. Just pretend I didn't bring it up. Then never yeah. mind. There you uh, go. <laughs> Coach, uh, no one knows Rocky Long better than you do. You've been how long? You've been uh, with Coach Long as a player. You know what? We uh, my first year, my uh, senior year of playing was back in 1998. That was Coach Long's first year in New Mexico, and uh, we've been together the last 18 years. So I mean, he's been just awesome to me. Well, you know, it's interesting because I love Coach Long. I actually know Rocky Long from his defensive coordinator days at UCLA. He was there for a couple of years before taking the New Mexico job, and you know. He, he was classic. Before the season began, we were talking about, you know, this Arizona State, uh, Stanford doubleheader, and he goes, yeah, you know, the time you may be not good for that. I mean, we're, we're really young, and, you know, we might stumble a few times. Um, I don't know, man. I, you've been around this program for a while. This, at least now, looks like it could be as good, if not the best San Diego State team yet under Coach Long. How difficult will it be for this team to keep that week-to-week focus, understanding that your guys are favored in every game the rest of the way, and obviously if you can run the table, there could be a huge prize at the end like a Fiesta Bowl or Cotton Bowl. Is this a team do you think can keep that focus, keep that emotional high week after week after week? You know, I think uh, one of the things that we, we, I mean, we don't talk about the future a whole lot around here we have a goal in mind, and the future goal we talk about always is being the conference champions. I mean, that's the number one goal around here. The, the idea is to win every single game we play. Uh, last year's group, we started out 3-0. and We had an opportunity to do the same thing. It was a very veteran-led group, and we showed up week four in South Alabama, and we weren't ready to go. Uh, this group is a very young group. It's a very young team. We have a, I mean, we have a true freshman starting at safety. We've got a couple of true freshmen that play on defense, uh, We've got four uh, old linemen that are redshirt freshmen. So, I mean, we've got a bunch of young guys. And maybe the hope is they're just so naive and don't know that they'll just keep winning and not even, not even think about all that stuff. And we, don't, we, uh, we approach it. We're going to be the week is going to be 1-0. This week it's Air Force. Let's finish Air Force and then see what happens. 